Here we are launching another season of the Cougar Coaches Show, Mediacom Channel 22, also online at ColumbiaCougars.com. My name is Cosmo. We start things off on the volleyball court. Melinda Ryan Washington, back at it again. Coach, welcome back. Thank you. Number 10 in the preseason poll for your team. Always a good thing. Obviously, you would like to be higher, but hey, we'll take number 10. We will. Coming off of, what was it, 21 straight trips to the national tournament? Yep. A year ago. Uh, and we'll get into uh, more of the team in just a little bit here as far as the record off the start. Three and one. Uh, let's go with roster first, talk about some of the players. Then we'll go back to the, uh, the action on the court. First off, uh, schedule-wise, you're not shying away from playing teams with numbers to the left of their name. That is for sure. But let's talk about some of the returning players first off, and then we'll get into some of the newcomers here for your Cougar volleyball team. Uh, let's talk about some of the returning players. Uh, Micah Simpson, returning at the Libro spot, uh, had some limited action last year, had a really serious hamstring injury. So she was limited uh, last year. Uh, but back in her starting role in the Libro spot this year, uh, hope for some really exciting things out of her um, as a senior this year and uh, already off to a good start. She, she started this past weekend and, and did a really nice job controlling the court in that spot. Polina Severina um, back uh, in her senior year, um, played on the right side last year, missed nationals last year due to a foot injury, ended up with two broken bones and a foot. but. Um, let us uh, actually was second, I believe, on the, in the, on the team in kills by the end of the season. But led us for most of the season in kills last year um, on that right side. And, when she, and she was a player the year before that that had suffered a lot of injuries, and finally, yeah. so last year was kind of a a good bounce back season yes. for for her. Build a lot of confidence now for her yeah. senior year. Yeah, and and you know was really strong for us in kills on that right side. We've moved her to the outside, which is I think where she belonged and uh, really belongs. Uh, you know, she's got a good view of the court. She sees the court. She's a player that can really um, get up in the air, and and she's she's healthy this year, and uh, she's six five, so she has a good view of the court. She has an assortment of shots, and she's just a really strong arm out on the outside. Um, she's a strong passer as well, so she's right now in the L one for us and playing very strong. She had a good weekend. Didn't play on the first. First day of the tournament uh, this past weekend, but we got her in on the second day um, and, and had a really strong showing on that second day and really brought our team uh, a lot of swing on the outside. Uh, Vin Van Han coming off of a red shirt season last year and uh, showing um, good progress after that red shirt season and looking to get her back into the lineup as well. Um, Penny Leo is a transfer student from Missouri State West Plains and fortunately for us she was able to transfer in in December of last year. And uh, she was the uh, uh, All-American selection out of West Plains last year, first team All-American for the Junior College Association and tremendous swing on, on the right side of our court. And she's a left-handed player out of China. And just, uh, you can hear that name a lot this year. I think she's a tremendous swing, as I said, and um, about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, on that right side, a big block. A big presence on the right side. She play, she'll play six rotations around and hoping to keep her healthy. She, she ba got banged up a little bit this weekend, had some collisions and things because she's just a magnet to the ball. <laughs> she wants that ball and um, she's learning our offense. And, and like I said, fortunately, she transferred in at semester, so she's had some time with us. Uh, Vika Lavrinchenko, who was a starter in the middle for us last year. Um, all season long in the middle, uh, who transitioned into the middle after playing outside the year before. But she's back as well and um, is looking strong again this year in the middle. Uh, she's also seeing some time on the outside for us. So strong core of returners there and lots of new players with very difficult names. <laughs> we'll start with the difficult name just to get it out of the way. When the press release came out from uh, Cindy Potter, uh, instantly I had three text messages and an email uh, from oh. some folks in uh, and the Alumni Association everything else going, so Cosmo, how are you going to handle this one on the coaches show? Um, can we just call her Yurini? Call her by her first name? Number 11, Yurini <laughs> Hadzi of Stradiado. What's what coach said. Yeah. Let's, let's go with that. Yep. My brother's Greek, so I had to call for some, <laughs> some uh, we had to call his dad even for some uh, help in translation. And I, I still don't get it exactly right, but we've played around with it quite a bit. I mean, there's, with, with the nationalities that you've had on the volleyball court, that Coach Klein's had with soccer and occasionally some basketball players. This one, I think, right now is on the top of the all-name team yes. as far as <laughs> length of the name and, and uh, attempting to pronounce, especially in a sport like volleyball where it's all about speed. Uh, but on the court, uh, obviously, she's off to a flying start. She is. Uh, she was very strong, very strong girl, good, strong core. Came out of a solid program in Miami-Dade Community College. Uh, was a team that played for a national championship last year. Um, their coach... 
uh, was a Columbia College graduate, um, Orihines Benoit, and that name might sound a little bit familiar because his wife, Olga uh, Correa Benoit, actually played uh, at Columbia College and was a national championship. Uh, player on our national championship team in 2001. So two Columbia College graduates running the Miami-Dade program down there and uh, Irini actually played for that national championship team last year at Miami-Dade. So strong training for Irini down there and she's just uh, coming in uh, high caliber play out of her already and um, able to run to the pin uh, just really strong for us and played a great tournament this past weekend. And then some some girls that are have Missouri ties, uh, some Rala and uh, Ozark area players as well on the roster. Yes, assistant coach um, Aliyah Hayes is from Ozark originally and has some ties down there. Uh, Sasha Robinson, obviously a setter, and uh, Coach Hayes was a setter down there, and her mother as well, a setter <laughs> at Ozark High School. So some setting ties there at Ozark High School. We were able to get Sasha, who uh, played on uh, a Final Four team for Ozark, an All-State player from down there. So uh, strong strong ties down in that area. Um, Kelsey, uh, Kelsey is from Rolla High School, and uh, again, uh, an Aaliyah Hayes tie there. Um, her former coach at Texas Tech and, and um, uh, former coach from back home was uh, Trish Knight, uh, who uh, was also at Missouri State West Plains, where Penny Leo came from. Uh, some ties there, but her, that former coach was uh, Kelsey's coach at Rolla, so some more ties there. It's amazing how the, the more things change, the more they stay the same with the recruiting as far as relationships and connections. And you set one domino in motion four years ago by recruiting Aaliyah Hayes, and now Four years later, she's helping you get players to play for her and yourself on the coaching staff. And we've had quite a few players out of Missouri State West Plains that come all the way back, you know, into the 90s. I mean, uh, Tamar Turner, Quanta Speak. We've had so many players out of out of so many programs that we just continue to have relationships with. So. And the fact that now some former players with with Brooke Simpson, with Lydia Van Dersen, and with um, I'm forgetting one more Paula Hosa mm -hmm. as grad assistant and coordinators helping. How does that help transition-wise? I know there's a lot of new faces, but to have girls that were on the team just last year kind of help give that message back to the current players and, and work on that. Well, you know, the, the Paula Hosa connection, we have five, uh, including Coach Hosa, five from Arizona Western. Uh, so that's another connection there. Coach Hosa, um, I don't even know, Amber Graham is a Arizona former Arizona Western uh, player. Um, I mean, there's just Paulina uh, Severina is an Arizona Western, um, Sashiko, our setter now, Arizona Western, Maria out of the middle, uh, also Arizona West. I'm going I'm to spit it all out. Maria <laughs> Del Mar Guzman Franco, there we go, uh, is Arizona Western. So all five of those players were former Arizona Western players. And so that's another connection that we've really worked. And, um, you know, Amber Graham, after she left Arizona Western, went to another Division I school and then came back to us. So, you know, those connections just continue to give back. Um, and uh, it's just, it's great. It's great to see Paula Hosa, though, work, work with those girls. I know she had the connection through Arizona Western with them, but now she's transitioned into a coaching role. And to be able to see her work both as their friend, but now as their coach and be able to communicate back with them off the court. It's, it's great. It's, and, and a lot of the sports, uh, not, it's not unique to Columbia College by any stretch, but you see the emotion of a senior night uh, on the court where they're getting their picture frame and their flowers and the balloons and, and, and then they finish their careers. And, you know, there's that almost, you know, how many years of volleyball since they were, you know, four sometimes playing volleyball is over, but a chance to continue to give on the coaching side and the recruiting side is, is a way to obviously kind of keep that fire going. Yeah, they, they really are a family, you know, and, and a lot of these girls, uh, you know, they're far from home, obviously, you can tell by our roster, but but they really are a family. They take care of each other. They're invested in each other. You know, they, they take time and they do a lot of things together on the weekends outside of volleyball. And um, I'm really proud of them, you know, just away from volleyball and a lot of the things that they do in the community and um, just just away from volleyball as, as people. And, and um, I think that the, the connections that they have go, go and will go well beyond volleyball. The Cougars are three and one, preseason ranked number 10. We'll come back and talk about those four matches they played and talk about the big tournament coming up uh, over the holiday weekend here in Columbia with head coach Melinda Rye Washington when we come back on the Cougar Coaches Show here on Mediacom Channel 22.
All right, guys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Mediacom Home Controller is the simplest way to control and monitor your home from anywhere. Honey, did I shut the front door? Mm -hmm. Lights are off. Yep. And the thermostat? It's all set. This is going to be a great vacation. <laughs> the tickets. Get Mediacom Home Controller and enjoy greater peace of mind for as little as $34.99 a month. Plus, get a $149 credit towards equipment fees when you call today. Talking Cougar Volleyball to start our season here on the Cougar Coaches Show with the head coach of that volleyball team, Melinda Rye Washington. As I mentioned, 3-1. and one. You go to Iowa for the Red Raider Classic. You split the first day. Uh, talk about the two matches. One of the win over number 24 and then a tough loss to number 9. Yeah, you know, I think that it was really early for us to play. I think it was uh, a little bit of a stretch to go out that early with a lot of new players. Um, but we needed to see ranked teams, and I think it was, it was good for us to see that right away. I think um, we tried some different lineups on the first day and held out some of our returners. We were dealing with some pretty good quad injuries and a couple of shoulder injuries right now, so we held out a few players. Polina didn't play on the first day um, at all, and then um, tried some different lineups and, and was okay against Jamestown. They weren't quite as good as, but Midland had all returners. Their systems, we could tell in the warm up, were going to be up and running almost as well as they were at Nationals last year. And, and they did. They, they were <laughs> up and running pretty well. Um, they had really good ball control and we didn't. We were almost pure chaos. Um, and so, uh, you know, we had to kind of take that loss as it came, and that was that was okay for for our girls to really see that and and take that in and understand that we were going to have to really um, make sure that we worked a lot harder when we got back here to uh, make sure that we were more disciplined in practice and really uh, listen to the coaches as far as you know you can't hit your way through a game because we are very talented hitters. We have some very unique weapons. In our in our hitting um, repertoire, and I think that um, you but you can't hit your way through games, and and I think that that was good for our team to see that that you can't swing your way through a game, and uh, it was good that we met up with a team like Midland that is very disciplined that early in the season, and um, so hopefully, and I think that it it showed the last couple of days in practice because now we. We, it showed that we have to play defense and we have to block and we have to do all the other things to win games. So um, the second day we started calling the offense from the bench instead of letting our brand new setter try to call the offense that she's not very familiar with. Uh, we went ahead and played some of the returners. Um, even though we had some injuries that we were dealing with, we went ahead and let them kind of limp through on Saturday and, and go ahead and play the game. And it was a very tough match against Northwestern. We ended up going five with them. Uh, it was their home floor. It was the last. They stretched us out. We played the first and the last game on that day um, with a six and a half hour wait between <laughs> after we checked out of the hotel. But, you know, whatever. It, you know, you still have to play the match. It was a home match for them uh, on their home floor with the pack gym, which was great. It's a great environment to play in. And we ended up getting a win. We gutted it out and then got a win. But we, we slowed things down for our side. We called the offense from the bench, and um, the girls really uh, gutted it out. They, they played well, and um, I think we started to figure some things out, that we have to play defense, we have to block, um, we have to do all those other things, and we still have to swing, swing away at the net. So hopefully this weekend we'll step it up and do a little bit better. And I think after seeing that we have to do those things, our practices have notched up this week. So it was a good tournament overall. Well, and, and typically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, scheduling teams and playing in tournaments early uh, with those ranked opponents in that match with Northwestern, as you mentioned, the number 12 team in the preseason. And now here on your home court, at least you don't have to worry about the travel or the hotel side of things. Uh, here at home with the Hampton Inn Classic again back over the Labor Day holiday. Number 19, number 4, number 23, and 7? Yes. And 10 yes. with you guys. <laughs> Once again, um, a stacked tournament. I know it's been tough over the years to get some of these programs to want to come here mm -hmm. uh, to play against Columbia College, but uh, with Viterbo, a name that you see all the time in the national tournament, a lot of these teams are always there. Yes. Uh, this uh, A stacked weekend. Yes, you know, I, I like to play those teams. It helps you to identify, you know, your weaknesses. I mean, I, I like to play those teams to get the wins, obviously, but as a Raider, I like to see where we are. I like to identify our weaknesses so that we can fix them. You know, I want to fix, if we have uh, deficiencies, I need to get those fixed by the end of the season. And 
not only do I need to see them, the girls need to see them. They need to see just how hard they need to work to, to see where they need to be by the end of the season. I don't want to find out in the last week when we're eliminated from a tournament where our deficiencies are. You don't, you know, you don't want to go walking out of a gym at the end of the season thinking, wow, I could have fixed that in the first week of the season, you know, and, and I want to know now so that I can be working hard and, you know, I can't, I can't fix it for the girls. So they need to see what they need to fix. And, and that way they can work hard in practice. And, uh, because I certainly can't do it for them and well, it's better for them to see it than me. Yeah. And I know and it's still part of your training. A lot of it is off the court, not just conditioning, but a, a more of a mental conditioning. And sometimes it's hard to play the psychological game when you see the rankings, but it's good for the team to go, okay, all right, yeah, we, we lost 3 nothing to number nine, but here's how we did it. As you go through the year, you can kind of look back at some of those previous matches. And, and, and really now as we get into the AMC with the defending champs being Park, um, who ran the table last season, uh, we've kind of always asked for and wanted the AMC to be better, and it certainly has – uh, risen to the occasion. Yes, it's it's a great it's a great situation to be in, and I think that uh, you know uh, the 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 NAI has changed quite a bit. We've lost quite a few schools, especially the West Coast used to be the dominant conference. Um, we've lost over half of those schools have gone to the NCAA, and um, that conference has really disintegrated. And and now the Midwest, our conference, is actually probably the strongest conference in the in in the country. And um, right now we, you know, that's why people are coming into our tournament now. And, and over this next weekend, there's really two rankings tournaments in the country and all eyes are, are on those two tournaments. So um, hopefully we'll be able to represent and get some wins. What is the number one thing that well, this team needs to get better at to, to do well this weekend? Um, I'd say ball control. Ball control and uh, just eliminate some of that chaos within our, our own systems. I think that uh, you know, everybody's just trying to get comfortable with each other. I think getting comfortable with our each other's roles, just, you know, knowing what the role is individually and and trying to simplify within the system. And sometimes that's hard when you're trying to build chemistry at the beginning of a season. Mm -hmm. Everything's new. Some of them, whole new country. Yeah. Uh, even the ones that are freshmen, you know, away from mom and dad for the first time. All that stuff, oh, uh, school, <laughs> classes, that's all uh, all new, and, and you guys kind of hit them right at the start with volleyball being a, a, a fall sport, um, trying to get that transition going. Yeah, that first week was a real whirlwind. whirlwind. We came in, uh, got moved into the dorms, went through or freshman orientation, and then got on the bus and went to Iowa. Okay. So it was, uh, it was very chaotic, and uh, the first day of the tournament continued the chaos, and then we kind of started to settle down the second day. The Hampton Inn so. Classic, uh, some of the best teams in the country uh, right here in Columbia at Southwell Complex, and uh, games all day on Friday and Saturday. They're scheduled up at ColumbiaCougars.com. Coach, good luck this weekend, and then before you know it, some conference games start popping up on that schedule. Yes. And I know you got some more travel dates as well. Well, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, Coach Belinda Rye, Washington, Cougars preseason ranked number 10, and uh, on the year at 3 and 1, come see them live at Southwell Complex. And thanks for watching the Cougar Coaches Show here on Mediacom Channel 22.